Hello again. When you don't leave your room often, it's easy to get bored, so today I decided to pretend to be a teenager during 2011. That being said, I am still me, so I couldn't resist including some pictures of Tommy and Teto up as well. Sorry if this deducts from the authenticity. I wanted to add to the atmosphere and make my room feel like a Victoria set, so I tried to put up a tarp, but I really don't know how, so I just used hair clips. Please send help. If you suspend your disbelief, does this shot feel like we would have been friends back on my Space. I apologize if you were a seen teenager then, and this brings back memories of your dark past. Lately, I've been really back into the Fruger Metro aesthetic that was popular in the early 2010s, and naturally that made me want to go back and revisit all my favorite teen sitcoms from back then. My favorite show from back then had to be iCarly, and in retrospect, I truly wonder how any of these scenes aired. But aside from the questionable writing, the unhinged creative direction by the stylist on shows like iCarly Carly and Victorious was really what left a lasting impression on me throughout the years. I mean, seriously, did people back then really wear this? But I guess I probably would think that they kind of go hard if I saw this on an M countdown or something. I'm easily influenced. To get into mood for today, I initially tried to dress like if a Midwestern emo was on Disney Channel. I couldn't cope with the idea that an image of me in that would be on the internet forever. Instead, here is my channel mascot dressed in CeCe Jones cosplay. Subconsciously, I feel like iCarly's editing style really rubbed off on me. Since today's video is a bit different from my previous uploads, some viewers may not be familiar with the 2010s American TV Fruger Metro style. This edit of Tiffany captures the vibe well. Even though shows like iCarly or Victorious have really tainted legacies now for deserved reasons, I can't help but want to pay and homage to the actors, the creatives, and the stylists that had a part in making those shows because they were just so strange aesthetically, but but like in a lovable way. But somehow they were so consistent with the outfits, I felt like I had to wear this red and gray shirt combo. Even David Archuleta wore this on his album cover. It's been like 16 years, but this song still has me on a chokehold. It's crazy. Anyways, I am actually only making this video because I got a very special present from my friend in the mail a few weeks ago. I'm sure you can already tell what it's going to be, but um, who knows? When I do this, I'm one of those hackers on 90s TV shows that are enhancing an image and tracking people's locations. I always appreciate it when you can tell an artist is really passionate about their craft. You can already tell from the design of the packaging and the references from the show that the person who made this is just really in love with what they do. Ah, it's so cool. I always wanted to have a pair phone since I was a kid, though I wish it was real so I could post on the slap.com. The app icons are really cute, of course, but I wish they were closer to the skeuomorphic Fruger Metro designs like the phone shown on TV instead of the modern design that they went with. Still, this is helping me fulfill my fantasy of being an iCarly extra at the smoothie store or an unnamed student in the background of Hollywood arts. Other than the phone, the seller also threw in these really lovingly designed stickers with callback to the iCarly cinematic universe. Looking at these just makes me feel like I'm nine years old again and sitting in front of the TV drinking orange juice. Good times. While researching ideas for this video, I actually found out that there was a victorious video game on the DS, and knowing me, I had to get it. When I was younger, I'd always want to look like Beck and have that aloof, mysterious, cool guy vibe. But then I, not very eventually, very, very quickly realized that I'm more of the Robbie type, which is why I'm wearing these fake glasses to pay homage to him. I'm really used to playing fashion games, so the lack of character customization was really disappointing. But for some reason, you can change your body proportions and even make your head smaller. Don't you love it when games let you live out your real life fantasies? I never really thought about whether shows that I watched on TV would have video games when I was younger, but there's something so euphoric about getting to walk through the hallways of Hollywood arts, or attending an acting class with Psychowitz while being bullied by Jade into wearing a clown wig. Obviously, the graphical fidelity of the game isn't exactly great. Words can't really describe the joy I felt when I found out that there was a locker customizing minigame. I really wanted to try painting my Tamaki profile photo, but if you've been following me for a while, you you already know that I have no art skills or hand-eye coordination, so don't pay attention to my drawing. Pay attention to the shiny, pretty colors that are in the game instead, please. No Hollywood arts debut is complete without customizing a real logger, so I decided to spend some of my AdSense money on one of these. 
Ooh, so cool. I wish they came in dark blue though, like they did on the show. Um, white's easier to paint on anyways, so no major complaints from me. Is my head that big? Yes, it's true, I have not learned my lesson from the time I tried Deco Den, and will be doing a second arts and crafts product in my room. I was feeling pretty good at first when I bought my little beginner's acrylic paint can, and immediately began trying to sketch out the Tamaki photo despite not having any drawing experience. The video isn't paused. This is real time. This is just my reaction to realizing I use permanent marker and not a whiteboard pen. <sighs> Anyways, so I just started painting over it. Don't mind how long my nails are, I lost my nail clippers somewhere in my room, and I'm convinced that I'll find them within a few days or so, so I haven't bought a new pair. I didn't bother getting a tray to mix on or a cup to dip the brushes in, which was a terrible idea. I eventually decided to give up on drawing Tamaki and only decided to paint the landscape, and even though you and I both know this wasn't going to turn out well, I decided to keep going and it was kind of therapeutic. Obviously, I'm not the type of guy that that goes on hikes or touches grass often. So I think this triggered some chemicals approximate to that experience in my brain. Can you tell that I was ready to give up at this point? I'm never going to do an art project on this channel again, you guys. But I don't think it looks that bad actually from afar. The colors are similar enough and it has a clean, natural feeling, don't you think? Anyways, this painting really triggered me, so I'm going to end the video soon. Thanks for hanging out with me again, and I'll see you eventually. Bye.